All right, so let's go ahead and answer this question one from the 2007 AP Calculus AB test. And the question says, let R be the region in the first and second quadrants bounded above the graph of y equals 20 over 1 plus x squared and below by the horizontal line y equals 2. So the first thing we want to do is plug these functions into our calculator. And as you can see, I already did that. And then after this, go ahead and press graph. And for this, we are going to go ahead and make a rough sketch of our graph. So 20 over 1 plus x squared. And then we have our y equals 2. And r is going to be this region above y, e y equals 2 and below our other function. And now we can go to answer part A. So part A is asking us to find the area of R. So to find this, we are going to have to use the top minus bottom method of our integration. And to set this up, to find our lower and upper limits, which are A and B, and this is top minus bottom uh, with respect to X. To find our a and b, we have to find our points of intersection between these two functions. So to do that, just set this up over here. 1 plus x squared equals 2. These are our two functions. We can go ahead and go to our math, our numeric solver. Plug in our functions, which are represented by y sub 1 and y sub 2. Enter. Uh, if we go to the left of the y-axis, we could just go to negative 1. Alpha solve. As we can see here, we have negative 3. So x equals negative 3. Let me go to the right. It looks pretty symmetrical. So it looks like it's going to be a positive 3. So x equals positive negative 3. And now we can go ahead and set up our integral function. Negative 3 to positive 3 of our top function, which is 20 over all of 1 plus x squared. And subtract our bottom function from this with respect to x. Go ahead and plug this into our calculator. Math 9, negative 3, 3 of our, remember the representation that we already put. So y sub 1 minus y sub 2. Let the calculator integrate that. And we come up with a 37.962 units squared, because this is our area of R. All right, so let's go to move on to part B. What part B is asking us is, Find the volume of the solid generated when R is rotated about the x-axis. So, rotated about the x-axis, we're still going to be with respect to x and using the f of x. And let's go ahead and write part b and what we're looking for, which is the volume of R uh, when rotated about the x-axis. And for this, since we know that our bottom function isn't the y, the y axis, ex, no, the x axis is itself, then we're going to have to use the washer method to find the volume. And the washer method is the function of pi times the integral of big R squared minus little r squared dx from A to B. So our A and B are already given in the problem. Well, not given in the problem, but we solved for them. They're the points of intersection. So it's going to be pi from negative 3 to 3 of our outer radius, which is our top function squared. So we're going to do 20 over all of 1 plus x squared squared minus our bottom function, which is 2, square that, 
and all this was with respects to x. If we go ahead and plug this into the calculator, pi times the integral from negative 3 to 3 of our y sub 1 squared minus our y sub 2 squared with respects to x of course let that load and here we can see that we have the value of 1871.190 units cubed and we're using uh, the measurement cubed because this is the volume of the solid so that's how you do part B now part C is saying the region R is the base of a solid for this solid, the cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are semicircles. Find the volume of this solid. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and do a rough, when I say rough, I mean really rough, sketch of this three-dimensional figure. Let's just do our plane here, x and y. And this is our y equals 2. This is our 20 over 1 plus x squared. And then our cross sections are going to be perpendicular to the x-axis and they're semicircles. So let's just do a semicircle here. And then show that it is indeed three-dimensional. Let's go ahead and do another semicircle here, just to get the better visual of it. All right, so there you can see my rough drawing. And what we are going to do first is set up our equation. So we're looking for the semicircle cross section, and then ultimately find the volume. So we know that the volume of a of a circular function is going to be represented with pi integral from a to b of our radius squared dx and now since we're using semicircle just have to cut that coefficient into two from a to b of our radius squared but as you can see here, our radius is not given. What we're given is the dynamiter, diameter, which is the top function minus the bottom function. So the radius equals top function minus bottom function. And then this is just going to be cut in half. And to do that, we're going to represent it by multiplying it by 1 half. So now we can go ahead and plug all our values in because we know that our a is negative 3 and our b value is 3. So we have our coefficient, our constant up here, from negative 3 to 3 of our radius, which is represented by this, 1 half of 20 over 1 plus x squared minus 2. That's our diameter. And all of this is going to be squared since that all together is our radius. And for this, what I did is I expanded this and uh, squared the constant here. So it would just be 1 fourth times your radius squared dx. Let's go ahead and rewrite all this. Then to make it even more simple, I just pulled this coefficient out here and combined it. So now it's pi over 8. 1 half times 1 fourth is 1 eighth. The same, we're going to keep it consistent here. 1 plus x squared minus 2 squared dx. 
And now we can go ahead and plug this into our calculator. And we're going to get the answer. So let's go ahead and do pi divided by 8 as our coefficient times math 9 from negative 3 to 3. And now what we're doing here is our y sub 1 minus y sub 2. All of that's going to be squared. y sub 1 minus y sub 2. Close parenthesis, square it. Uh, with respects to x. Let that load. And here is our answer. 174.2 six eight units cubed and that is the volume of this solid here and now we have completed all of this question one from the 2007 AP calculus FRQ